This is the cheapest gaming PC on Amazon that comes with its own graphics card, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, a Ryzen CPU, and even Windows 11. After two days, our $300 gaming PC from Shinobi or Shinobi is finally here. I'm not trying to waste any time, so let's get right into the unboxing. The packaging is pretty normal. There's just like two big foam blocks over here that I'm kind of struggling to get out. It's like ripping as I'm trying to get it out. First impressions of this PC case, you can see we have like a small tiny window. Let's just rip this just like that you guys can see a little bit inside it's not like a big side panel but at least it's something it's better than nothing at least this pc is also really really light and as you can see we have a couple of buttons at the top over here we also have a cd like case which is really you never see that at all then on the side we have like all the little ports like the usb and like headphone jack of course over here in the back you have all the other ports and the power supply is also at the top of the pc case instead how it usually is at the bottom and like most gaming pcs but let's just take a look inside the pc and see how like the cable management is looking okay so the cable management is kind of like I expected. They did put some effort in with like a couple zip ties over here and here to kind of clear it up a little bit. And then here is the RX 550. M many gaming PCs at this price point don't have their own graphics card. So I was really surprised about that. It's using a motherboard, the A320 motherboard. And also to note over here at the front, there's only a fan over here instead of two. It has space for two if you want to upgrade, but there's only one installed at the bottom here. Right over here is the RAM and it only has one stick of 16 gigabytes of RAM instead of two eight gigabyte sticks, but that's kind of to be expected. I mean, it is a budget PC, but let's take a look at the back and just see how the cable management back there is looking. All right, so there isn't any cable management on the back, but that's kind of to be expected. The only reason you cable manage in the back over here is just if you upgrade in the future, but it's a budget friendly PC and most people that are buying this PC are probably not even gonna like upgrade it anytime in the future. So it kind of depends on your needs, but for most people, I think it's fine. Huge shout out to World of Tanks for sponsoring this video. World of Tanks is a super Super popular free to play game with over 100 million players. There's absolutely no shortage of tanks as there's over 600 tanks that you're able to pick from. There are six different modes to play in, which includes open fields, steep hills, forest, deserts, and much more. World of Tanks was designed with the inspiration of real tanks, so you get to play with authentic tanks that also make you feel like you're almost inside of them. If you're like me and love playing with your friends, World of Tanks allows you to play in groups of up to three players, and you can even join clans so you can play with the same players. There's always something to progress in world of tanks because you can modify and upgrade your tank which makes it better in battle the more you play the higher rank your tanks will be which is a great way to show off just how high of a rank you are with your favorite tank and don't forget to use promo code tank mania to get a seven day free access to a premium account which includes many rewards such as 250,000 credits and a bunch of other premium rewards such as new tanks so make sure to download world of tanks with the first link in the description i'm really excited to test out this 330 dollar gaming pc in game so let's go and do that okay so this is the setup we're running we have a 32 inch 165 hertz monitor of course the gaming pc a mouse pad custom keyboard and the g pro and now let's just turn this on there's a pretty big button over here let's just see if anything happens Oh, wait. Okay, turns out I had to flip the switch on the power supply. I forgot to do that. So take number two. And it should have a little bit of RGB. Yo, wait, why is nothing happening? All right, that wasn't the PC malfunctioning at all. I was just kind of dumb and forgot to like actually plug in the power supply. But now let's actually turn on the PC. Okay, so just like that. And there we go. You can see, I think this is the only RGB, but it has at least a little bit. We have red. This is what it was advertised as. But I don't know if um, you can change the color inside. There's unfortunately nothing and you can barely even see inside. I'd have to like really increase the ISO, but you can see there's really just barely any light in here because this is kind of tinted, but at least you still get some over here. Okay, and just like that, it loaded in. Looks like it comes pre-installed with Firefox, which is kind of weird. And then there's like Word and Excel. So I don't know if it comes with like the actual 360 Office, but yeah, so far nothing went wrong at all. And it actually does come with the pre-installed Windows 11, like it says. All right, so I finally got Opera GX to download and Google, but on Google, I can't download anything. So I'm just running a quick benchmark right now. It's halfway done and everything is a little bit slower on this PC. It has an SSD though, but it's still a lot slower on this PC compared to my normal one. But I'm really interested in how like the input lagging game will be. Okay, so for some reason it doesn't recognize the SSD. So it like won't give me a benchmark test, but there is an SSD with like 500 gigabytes. So yeah, I guess I'm just gonna like go in game and we'll just see how the FPS is. By the way, I didn't change like any settings on this. I of course could optimize it a little bit, but I just didn't 
want to. I want to keep it exactly fresh. And then of course, if you, any of you guys buy this PC in the future, you can optimize it and get maybe a little bit more FPS. Definitely a downside to this PC is it's taking a long time for this to upload. I've already been here for like 10 minutes just to like install all the games. It's gonna take a quite a while. Finally, after 50 minutes, Valorant finished uploading. And just to show you guys the settings we're running, we have it all on low, everything on like the lowest setting. And we currently have like 70 FPS, but this is gonna change. We're only in like the menu right now. I'm probably just gonna go into like a quick death match. I'm really curious how much delay I'm gonna feel like on this PC compared to like the normal one I use. This is my first Valorant game and Valorant's a CPU based game. And the CPU on this PC is by far the part that's lacking the most. So to be quite honest, I don't think Valorant is gonna run really smooth at all. I'd be surprised if we even got like 60 FPS. I might have to go into like 720p or something. Yeah, dude, this is, yeah, this is pretty laggy. I mean, 60 FPS? Okay, let me buy a vandal real quick. We'll see. It feels really, really choppy. Here, wait, let me try and lower the settings a little bit. Okay, I'm on a little bit of stretch resolution. We're on 1280 by 1024. This actually feels a lot better. It doesn't look as good, but I mean, a lot of people that play Val use stretch res anyways. One tap, so weird. A headshot, there we go. Yeah, this definitely feels more, much more delayed than my normal PC. I don't know, maybe if you lowered the resolution again, it would be better, but this is like really delayed. Like you can feel the mouse almost like ghosting a little bit. I mean, Valorant's a comp competitive base game so i'm just kind of trying to be strict to give you guys the most accurate idea yeah i think i think the only way you could play valorant on this pc is if you use a stretch res like 1280 by 1024 otherwise it's just not playable at all yeah because right now i'm getting like 70 80 fps and maybe if i go in game it will be a little bit different i'm gonna go in game and see how it goes actually all right we're in a quick spike rush wait did it just crash no we're good we're good we're good yeah the only way you can play this is if you use stretch resolution all right so i loaded into a quick spike rush and it says we're getting like 70 FPS right now, but it feels really choppy. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but it's really, really choppy. It's like lagging. It's like dropping to 45 even sometimes. Dude, this is literally lagging so bad. Look, I'm on 28 FPS. It's dropping to 28 FPS. Yeah, this thing is lagging a lot. I'm gonna try and go even on a lower stretch resolution here, actually. It's freezing so much. I would not call this a playable experience. Let's go 1024 to 768. Literally the lowest you can go on resolution. Let's see how this performs now. I'm still getting like six 60 FPS here, but it actually is stuttering a little bit less. But like, if you really want to be a competitive player in Valorant, this is just not going to cut it, quite honest. And I think it's just due to the fact that this CPU on this PC is like the part that's lacking the most. All right, so for Valorant, definitely a no-go unless you're like playing really, really casually because playing Valorant on a CPU like this is just not, not it, not it at all. All right, so Minecraft finished installing, but I'm just going to go ahead and restart it because it seems like it's freezing a lot as it's trying to open. Like I pressed windows and it still didn't pop up. Like it's really freezing right now. Yeah, I think it's definitely better if I just restart it real quick because it seems like it's getting overloaded a little bit. I just spent $30 getting Minecraft for this video. And the only reason I got Minecraft is because people that buy this PC are probably going to be casual gamers. So I feel like Minecraft is pretty like a casual game. And these are the settings, to be honest. I don't know exactly like what the best settings are. So I'm just going to kind of go with like whatever's default here and just see how it is. So far we're in lobby, we're getting about 60 fps but i think that's what it's capped at so here let's just open our world we had earlier okay so it's definitely lagging and glitching so somehow because we only have two fps or like three fps i don't know if i have to restart my pc i already restarted it i don't know what it is there's no way this is normal right i just searched it up and minecraft is also a cpu based game which is why this pc kind of struggles a little bit with minecraft right now we're getting like steady 60 but if i increase the render distance i'll just show you guys it really really starts freezing a lot like right now i have it pretty low if we put it even on like 12 chunks then you will see it really starts freezing a lot here just need to load a little bit you can see that the gpu is only at 43 degrees and it's barely being used because like minecraft like i said is a cpu based game it still can actually for casual play i feel like this is decent enough but it does go down quite a bit and your graphics have to be kind of low and i think i'm running this at 720p right now yeah it's at 720p right now if i put it at 1080p you'll see it'll really Really start struggling a lot now we're at 1080p and it is freezing a little bit yeah you can see it's stuttering quite a bit and honestly all you need to do is upgrade the cpu on this pc as soon as i move on to the next game it will probably be like fortnite or something then the fps should be a lot better you can see it's at 115 but then it drops to like 30 it's just so inconsistent like it really really just lags way too much see it's going at 18 it's like when it starts rendering all the way in the distance it really starts lagging quite a bit so yeah the 
Athlon CPU is definitely just really not it. Like I said at the beginning of the video, it's the weakest point, but I've only been testing games right now that are CPU based. So yeah, for the next game, it's going to be GPU based and it will probably just be Fortnite. So it's now the next day and I let three games download overnight, Warzone, Rainbow Six Siege, and Fortnite. They each took like an hour and a half or two hours to download. It was taking so dang long for any game to download. But yeah, for the first or I guess the third game we're going to be testing out is going to be Fortnite, which like I mentioned is a GPU based game. So this PC should get like a lot better FPS now. This PC was acting super slow and it's because I literally had it on for like, I'm not even kidding, maybe like 24 hours at this point. So I definitely need to run a quick restart. Right now it's saying that the GPU is 100% loaded. I don't know if you guys can see that right over here. Yeah, and it's just getting five FPS. So I think it's because I left the PC on for a while while it was downloading. So I'm just gonna keep it off for maybe like 40 minutes or something. And then I'll like pick up the video after that and we'll just see how the PC is doing. Cause it seems like it's really lagging a lot right now. It fixed the problem. Now we're getting around 100 FPS in the menu and we're at 1080p and then like all the low settings, direct X11 and they have a bunch of like new settings but I just put everything on like the lowest all the way to the left. So yeah, right now in lobby, we have like 100 FPS but I'm just gonna go inside of creative right now into just like a random free build map and just see how the FPS is looking. I just loaded in and it says we're getting around 80 to 90 FPS and you can see that it's like it's a GPU based game, like 100% of the GPU is being used, but I don't think all of it, but definitely most of it is. It has a little bit of frame drops, but here, let me just build real quick. You can see it does freeze like quite a bit, to be honest. And there is like decent amount of input delay and I'm on low mesh builds. So these builds actually have to render less, but it's still freezing quite a bit. It's actually like kind of hard to build here. Let me decrease the 3D resolution just to make it a little bit better quality. On camera, you actually don't notice too much of like a difference in quality if you're on like 70% 3D resolution, but there is a decent amount of more FPS. But the problem with these like really kind of cheap PCs is it feels a little bit like spongy. Like everything is really, really delayed. I mean, you can still triple at it, but there definitely is a decent amount of delay. But like you can see, I'm, I can at least like do decent building and everything like that. And we're still keeping like what 80 FPS around there. And the GPU is sitting at like what 56 degrees right now. But here, let's go in game and let's test how good the FPS actually is in game. All right, so loading in, as you can see, it is kind of dropping FPS a lot. And I don't know if it's my internet, but it says I have like 200 ping. I'm pretty sure it's just like the PC actually lagging and that's why the ping is high. But yeah, right now we're getting around like what, 60 FPS. And when we jump out, it's definitely gonna drop a lot. Yeah, you can see it's really like dropping quite a bit. Cause yeah, dude, look how much it's freezing. I think you have to run even lower 3D resolution or something. Cause you can't really decrease it even more. I just landed and you can see it's getting 80 FPS, but as soon as I start moving, it's just starts stuttering so much. Like as soon as I start moving, you can see on camera, it just goes to 20 FPS. It's like not consistent at all. And I'm gonna actually try and even lower the settings more. And then I'll just see how the FPS is. Cause right now this is like actually unplayable. All right, I'm gonna go to 720p. That should help a little bit. Cause it should be like less pixels to render. And then everything else is low. And we'll even decrease the 3D res to like 60%. I think that's the lowest can actually have it at like even even be able to see anything, but hopefully this actually helps it a little bit because it is just freezing way too much. Okay, so now the FPS is actually really big. Okay, let's just wait for it to like catch up. It's just, see, it gets like 80 FPS, right? 90 FPS, but it just starts freezing so much. I can definitely tell this is better. Okay, but you see, it just freezes. It just goes to like six FPS and nothing's running in the background. I literally only have Fortnite open. Nothing's running in the background at all and this thing is just bugging out like crazy right now. I don't even think optimizing this PC will actually help. You're just probably gonna have to run like really low end games to be honest. Like you just are always gonna have to go in low settings with this PC or you could even use GeForce Now. I think using GeForce Now on this PC would really, really be helpful. But for now, I'm just gonna test out like the raw power of this PC and so far it's not the best. I just got into arenas and it looks like I'm getting around like 60 FPS right now. It actually is not dropping too much. Hopefully I don't jinx it but yeah right now it's actually pretty good and it matches up against like some really sweaty players so i'm probably not going to get any kills but i just want to see like how the fps kind of performs here yeah i don't even know this map or anything bro okay but actually so far i think arenas in apex is really you can actually play on this if you put like 720p like it's getting 60 fps and it has not even dropped once and i feel by far the least amount of stuttering i have this entire time out of all the games we tested apex arenas actually runs by far the best has the least stutters it was getting around like 50 to 60 fps and it was barely dropping anywhere below that to be honest but it just sucks i'm not that 
good at Apex. I wish I was a little bit better, but yeah, all the other games, I would say like Fortnite, Minecraft, Valorant, they're just not really too good on this PC. I would not recommend it. I know a lot of you guys are deciding whether you should get a $300 gaming PC like this or an Xbox Series S, which is around $300. And let me know down in the comments if you want me to make a video actually comparing both of them, because I think it's a pretty good video and they're both similar in price point. If you enjoyed this video and want to see me do more videos about PCs, consoles, and just comparing things in general, make sure you drop a quick sub and let me know down below in the comments like what type of content you guys want to see. I just built my very first gaming PC a couple of days ago, so if you have a little bit of a higher budget around six to seven hundred dollars, make sure you check this video up here. And yeah, that's about it. God bless.